my presentation is about what we have done on the campus and also giving you a few examples of what we have done with farmers on a larger scale at state government uh, of Uttar Pradesh. International Crop Research Institute for Semi-Arid Tropics, ICRISAT, started in the year 1972 and it was with the Government of India's support and a consortium of Ford and Rockefeller Foundation that was uh, uh, instrumental in bringing this institute as a leader in dryland agriculture. In fact, it was conceptualized more as a Sorghum Research Institute and eventually looking at semi-arid tropics, the founder fathers recognized the value of working on multiple crops of great importance, particularly from the point of view of food security, fodder security, nutrition security, and livelihood security. So ICRISAT is a not-for-profit, non-political organization, and it conducts research for development in semi-arid tropics and global uh, status of semi-arid tropics in terms of geography it is 625 million square kilometers, almost 40% of the geography and nearly 30% of the population, 2.1 billion, out of which 764 million are living below poverty line. So that is the prevalent poverty in semi-arid tropics because of lack of one important natural resource that is water. And that is where ICRISAT is working in Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, this Patancheru campus is our headquarters and ICRISAT has presence in Africa, in East and Southern Africa as well as West and Central Africa. In fact, we are present in 11 countries in Africa in different ways. In some countries, we have our own regional headquarters, our own land and offices. In some countries, we are hosted by some international organizations. And in some countries, we are working in terms of our implementation of projects. Uh, coming specifically to what exactly this semi-arid tropic means. In fact, semi-arid tropic is a typical geography where the rainy season is rather very short. If we take example of Hyderabad, we receive 850 millimeters of annual average rainfall. That is long-term average, but since last three years, we have had more than 1,000 millimeters. And technically looking at it, 850 millimeters is a lot of water. But the problem comes with its distribution. Uh, yeah, uh, the total rainfall 850, out of which 80% occurs only in about four months, June till September. That is. Uh, that has three important implications. One is there is a second crop not possible. Four months of 80% rainfall that is close to 700 millimeters, which means less than 200 millimeters spread over eight months is not really adequate for a second crop. And even in middle of rainy season, we will have daily temperatures of around 30 degrees. High temperatures, direct sunlight falling directly on the soil surface keeps deteriorating soil quality, especially affecting the soil humus. That is where they say the evapotranspiration losses during the six to eight months are a lot more than the quantum of water we receive from the rains. Therefore, it's all the more important that when it rains, it is so very important to harvest the rain, conserve it and use it for possibly growing a second crop. So therefore, although the external perception about ICRISAT is we are only working on crop research, but then we are right from the beginning mindful of the fact that soil health management and rainwater harvesting are the prerequisites before we really work on crop improvement. Therefore, although we are doing a lot of research on crop research, we are equally working on rainwater harvesting and soil fertility management. So these are the six mandate crops that ICRISAT has been working on. The six crops include three millets, two pulses, and one oil seed crop. The millets are sorghum, pearl millet, and finger millet. The pulses are chickpea and pigeon pea, and the only oil seed crop we are working on is groundnut. So this combination is chosen for a couple of reasons. One is, yeah, these are the major crops you find in most of the farming systems across global semi-arid tropics. And second one is, this is a 
combination of cereals, pulses, and oil seeds, that is carbohydrates, proteins, and vitamins. Now, let me come to how we have gone about water harvesting on the campus itself. This is how ICRISAT campus looked when ICRISAT came into this particular potential campus during 1972. And from 1972 to 78, six years, some of the finest soil scientists, farm engineers, and crop scientists have put together their brains and then developed this campus into world-class research facility for research in dryland farming. And one approach, yeah, call it fortunate or unfortunate, we still have only one approach to dryland agriculture development, that is watershed, a geography where when it rains, the water drains out from excess water, drains out from this geography from a single drainage point. And the beauty of this watershed approach is every dryland region is one or the other watershed. And we have invariably ridges and slopes. And that is where when it rains because of the slopes and depending on the gradient, uh, rainwater is compromised in terms of percolation or infiltration into groundwater. And again, depending on slopes, the excess rainwater flows away while flowing away takes away the topsoil, yeah, uh, uh, deteriorating the soil health. So therefore, ICRISAT has adopted this uh, watershed approach where we treat the land from ridge to valley, trying to uh, apply various types of technologies in order to slow down the movement of water uh, so that more water percolates into the ground and then it also reduces the soil erosion. And obviously, the purpose of watershed approach is to uh, allow more infiltration and then conserve as much water as possible so that there is a possibility of growing a second crop in the year, which is normally not possible in typical drylands. 